My name's Sean, I'm a full-time clothing eBay reseller, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I take pictures of pants and shorts. And I'm gonna show you why I take the photos, what order I take them in, and then we're gonna go over to the computer and I'm gonna show you how I list them and how I reduce the amount of returns I get because of fit issues. First thing first, you're gonna to wanna to get you a phone. I use the iPhone 7 Plus. I take my photos in square mode. Seems to be the best presentation on eBay, in my opinion. Another thing I like to have next to me is a pair of scissors. I use scissors to cut threads, any tags that I might have missed, or just anything that looks out of place. I also have a lint roller on my right side, and I have a fabric shaver just in case I need to do any touch-ups before the photos. First pair of jeans we're going to start with, it's a pair of Cinch. It's a men's jeans brand that I find a lot here in Texas. And as we line up to put the hanger on it, we're going to make sure that the button is lined up with the very back middle of the jean. As you can see here, the middle of the hanger is lined up center line with the jean. The first photo you're going to take is the cover photo. This is the most important shot in my opinion, and you're going to make sure it's perfectly centered and just a little bit of a border around the entire jean. Next from here, if the front of the item has a stain, a flaw, a hole, a tear, anything like that, you're going to want to make it your second photo. If there's a flaw on the back side, you're going to make it the second photo after the back profile shot of the jean. And then in the computer, you're going to move that to the second slot in the listing. You want to make sure that your flaw photos are in the second slot. You want the best presentation for them to actually click on the item, but then you want them to click off if they see the flaw and they're not interested. You do not want to hide the flaw at the end of the photos because the buyer is going to not go that far into the listing to see those photos. He's going to buy it and then he's going to want to return because he didn't see the flaw. And you don't have much defense in saying it's in the photos because that's just not how it works in this day and age. So from here, I'm going to take a photo of anything outside of the norm, like the logo on the cinch jean. I'm going to make sure I take a profile shot of that. Sometimes you can take one of the button, but I can capture both of those in the same photo. From here, if the jeans or shorts are button fly, you're definitely going to want to take a picture of that. The majority of jeans and shorts are going to be zipper fly. So if it is a zipper fly, I do not take that photo. If it's a button fly, I absolutely take that photo. Now that we've turned the jean over, I'm going to take a picture of the back side of the jean. From here, you may think, oh, take a picture of the pocket, but I'm actually going to take a picture of the leg opening because it's a little torn. And then I'm going to take a picture of the back pocket, and then we're going to take the jean off the hanger. Now that we have all the photos of the outside of the jean taken, we're going to take a picture of the tags. You're going to make sure you have the brand, the size, and the materials if available. You're also going to want to put any other features that are outside of the norm for the pair of jeans. On the inside of the pocket, they'll have some type of um, speech about their company, or maybe they have an actual like cut and design on the inside of the pocket. Cinch is kind of different. They put like cinch up here by the fly. I don't take a picture of that, but some people would like that. From here, you're going to want to make sure that you once again get the button and the back middle of the jean straight and you're going to do a waist measurement. You're going to start here at this end, but you're going to take a photo only of the end with the largest numbers because that's going to indicate like the waist length. I have this ruler to my left side and I'm able to just grab it and place it right on the jean and take my photo. From here, if it was a women's pair of jeans, you're going to want to take a picture of the rise. A lot of women are going to like the rise measurement. If you want to go as far as the hip measurement, you should probably do that too. I only did the waist, the rise, the length, and then the uh, leg opening for women's. But for men's, I only do the waist and I do the inseam. So we're going to go ahead and go get the inseam measurement now. You want to make sure this is taut but not stretched out past the measurement. A lot of times jeans are going to be about an inch off from the actual tag size. The more expensive jean, in my opinion, is able to hold its true size after a few washes. Cheaper jeans like American Eagle or if it has too much elastane or spandex in it will shrink down in size and it can be off as high as three inches. If it's more than two inches off in waist or inseam, I do not even buy and I do not list the item.
Now that we have that measurement, you're gonna fold the jean in on itself, grab this backside to straighten it up. I place it on my knee and then I fold it over once. Once it's folded in half, I place it back on the table and I fold it in thirds. This is about the best and tightest way you can fold a pair of jeans from my experience. And then I have these clear poly bags. I place all my items in clear poly bags. I once again place it on the photo station and I grab the label. I custom printed these labels. I place them on the flap and I do not close the flap because it's really hard to get that piece of plastic off of your hands after you take it off. So I just place it on the front and then I take my last photo of the SKU. I then file it into my inventory system. Now I'm gonna go through the photos with another pair of men's jeans at full speed so you guys can kind of get a feel and you can see the timestamps for how long this takes me. Okay, there you have it. Moving on to shorts. There's typically more to take photos of, like maybe an emblem at the bottom hem of the short or possibly another pocket that a pair of jeans may not have. So I'm gonna show you how I take pictures of these. It's pretty simple. It's just a lot faster because it's lighter weight and it's less material to move around. We've got a pair of Oakley like hybrid shorts. Now with these, it's kind of tough to tell the color, but it's actually like a green and black color. Take a mental note of the colors when you're doing photos. So when you get to the listings, you can remember like this isn't a true black color, but it's not really a true green color either. It has this emblem here down at the bottom that we're going to take a photo of. And it also has a little back pocket. Sometimes depending on how these pockets are cinched together, like this one is a snap or sometimes they're a button or they're Velcro. You're going to want to take a photo of that just so it gives the buyer a little idea of what kind of item they're getting. Same method, lining the hanger up with the center line of the shorts. Now after the cover photo is taken, I sometimes open up my fingers where the pocket is so you can see if it actually has a pocket. A lot of shorts from this angle, you cannot tell if there's a pocket and buyers will ask, does this have a pocket? It's best to try to answer all questions a buyer would have through the photos because in this day and age, people just look at price and they look at photos. They don't read descriptions very often because they don't like to read. They just like to see photos and videos and, and hear people talk about it. So my opinion, I try to do as much as I can to eliminate any issues in the future. With shorts, it's the same as jeans. You're gonna to wanna to take a photo of both the brand, the size, and the material tag if available. From here on out, we're gonna take our waist measurements, our inseam measurement, and then we're gonna bag it up.
Now, if the waist measurement doesn't match up with the waist size on the garment, and maybe it's on like a half, it's tempting to stretch it out to try to get it to match up perfect but don't try to deceive the buyers. They're gonna lay it down and measure it and they're gonna send a photo of saying, hey, this measurement is wrong, your measurement is wrong, I need to return the item. It's best just to leave the half. These are a size 38. I think it came out to 37, but if it was 37 and a half, I'll show you how to list it in the computer so you can accurately represent the true size of the pant. Okay, we're gonna go full speed on a pair of shorts just so you guys can see. It's gonna be a little bit faster than the jeans just because it's easier to move the item around. All right, that wraps up all the photos. We're gonna go over to the computer. I'm gonna show you how I list them. Okay, first things first, I'll tell you a little bit about my setup. I use the ThinkPad, this is a Windows computer, to list all my items. I also have an external monitor here that's linked to this computer so that I can drag the photos from the right over to the left. I have a transfer cable here. It's just your standard lightning to USB. So the first thing I do is I plug in my phone to my computer and I press allow so that I can grab the photos from it. This window here will pop up and you're just gonna click into the storage, the DCIM and the folder that has all the genes in it. I'm gonna control A to copy all of them. I'm gonna put them in a new folder here and let them load up. Now from this step here, I'm gonna double click into the new folder and then I'm gonna control A to highlight all of them and I'm double checking to see if the same amount of photos transferred properly because every once in a while, some photos won't come across and you'll have to delete that photo and then upload the rest of them. So this matches and from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control C and I'm gonna click into another folder with the date on it. I put control B to copy all those pictures into this folder. And the reason I do this is one, to have a backup. I put all my photos for the day in a monthly folder just in case eBay loses your photos, it'll save you a lot of time in the future. From here, I expand this new folder. I drag it over to the right, and then I have it ready to transfer for listing. And then I delete the photos off of the iPhone so that I can clear it for the next set of photos. Now that we're done with that, we can start the listing process. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up a couple eBay pages. I like to open up two pages when I do this. The first page, I'm gonna open up my store page, and this is so I can grab other items in my store that are similar so that I can make it faster whenever I list. The second one is in case I need to look up comps, I can just search eBay right here and look up the comps. Our first pair of jeans was the cinch white label jeans. So all I'm gonna type into my own store is cinch jeans because I know I have a pair in my store that's already listed. It populated five pairs of jeans. Some are the green label, but a couple of them are the white. So I'm gonna grab this one right here, click into it and I'm gonna sell a similar item off of my own listing. First thing you wanna do is delete all photos, and then you're gonna drag all your new photos over here. While this is uploading, now this is very important. First, you wanna see if they upload in the correct order, which they typically do. Next, you're gonna to want to start filling out the rest of the listings. But for this video, I'm gonna show you what I would do with this flaw, so we don't have to go back up and do it again. This has the torn leg openings on the back, so you're gonna drag this photo in the second photo slot. You're gonna follow it right back up with the back profile shot. So now, if the buyer looks at my listings, they see a nice front shot of the jean. Then the second photo, they see some torn legs, and they say, well, what is that? 
and then they see the back photo where the torn actually is. So say it was torn on the back pocket, then they could see, oh, it's on the back part of the jeans and not be confused with where the issue is. From here, we're gonna look at our title. Now I like to put the brand, the model or what it is, I put the gender, the size, and then I put the color and then any other features at the end. We had cinch white label jeans, men's 30, 32, and then in parentheses, I put the actual measurements. But in this pair of jeans, it's a 3630. So I'm actually going to delete this and type 3630. And then because I have it blown up on my right side, as big as the icons can go, I don't have to click into the icons to see what the size is. I can actually just look at it from here. So this one is in fact a 3628. So we're gonna put that in here and we need to remember those numbers so whenever we go to the listings down below, we can type in the exact size under the item specifics. Now I'm going to control A and control C to copy this title because we're gonna paste it down below a little bit later. The custom skew, I don't have to scroll back up just because I can see to the right what the custom skew is. I try to do this going down without having to go back up for any reason whatsoever. Next, you wanna double check the item category, but since you sold similar off of your own item, it's a high probability that it's the correct item category. Next, we have the brand cinch, the type is jeans, size type regular, and then the size here is what the tag size is. So we're gonna put 3630 for the tag size. Then it is a straight pair of jeans because we copied one that was the same model. Next, the inseam, we're gonna put 28.5, but you're also gonna space and put inches. And the reason you space and put inches is just because eBay already puts inches off of their regular ones. Now I know this is not a drop down that's available for you because for men's jeans, they don't have half inch. Women's, they actually will have a half inch available for the drop down. I just like to put this because it's clear that it matches what our parentheses are up here. So the buyer knows something is up with these jeans. They're gonna wonder why it says 28.5, but that's why they're able to have multiple ways to check to see why the jean is not the same as the tag size. For waist, we're gonna put 36. And you see, I could plus and put 36, but I wanna use the search result that comes up, so I'm gonna put 36 inches. The reason I put the inches here is mainly just to match what eBay has. As far as the rest of these item specifics, I really don't like to fill them out just because people are mainly looking at the title, the photos, and the price. Not many people are actually looking for all these specific item specifics, unless the item is kind of rare and has a couple features that are a little bit different. But for your standard pair of jeans, I keep it pretty bare. The fabric type denim is already in there, so I just leave it in there. The closure I do think is a very important one, and whether or not it's vintage is important. For item condition, this is a pre-owned pair of jeans, and for the description, I have a little blurb here. It reads out, this item is used, therefore measurements may differ from new condition measurements. Please see measurements in photos. If you're not sure about the size, flat lay an item of your own and compare your measurement with ours. That's already pre-populated because it's a save off of my own item and I'm just pretty much copying the listing and changing just a few specific details for the new pair of jeans. Now text blaze is what I use to pre-populate this and text blaze is a Google Chrome extension. So I just press backslash C and it pre-populates my condition description without me having to type it ever again. Now for the description, because we already copied the title from earlier, all we have to do is highlight and press Control V to upload the new title. And let me read out the description for you. It says, our items are carefully examined, measured, photographed, and stored in a smoke-free environment. We do our best to describe accurately and measure approximately at the time of listing, but just in case, we offer 60-day free returns on unused, unworn items. This unused, unworn items is just to kind of deter the buyer from renting out the item for a weekend and then returning it. Now, I put 100% authenticity guarantee. I do not have any credentials to authenticate these brands, but I feel like it just adds a little bit of comfort to the buyer. And I have a pretty good idea of how to avoid fake items, and I try to keep them out of my store at all costs. Item typically ships same or next business day. I do have one day handling, but I like to put that in there because there are times where I ship the same day. And then in blue coloring, I put, please contact me first. I'll do my best to answer all questions and resolve any issues. Thank you for stopping by. I think it's important to keep these characters low. I think whenever people put novels in there, 
about their items, I think it deters buyers quite a bit. For pricing, now it has the sold listings for the last 90 days, the medium sold price to the right here, but I price these just based off of experience. This is a really good pair of jeans. It does have the flaw in the back, but typical person that's gonna buy this is like a cowboy, a rancher, kind of that Western guy, and he's not gonna really care about the torn leg openings. So I'm gonna stand tall at $29.99, and I am gonna accept offers. If somebody offered as low as $20, I would accept this. However, on my shipping policy, I charge $8.99 for shipping on all items, and that gives me the ability to accept a little bit lower offers because I do make a few dollars whenever I buy the label. To finish up here, we're just gonna save for later. After we save on the right side, we're gonna delete all those old photos. I'm gonna do one at full speed so you guys can kind of get a feel for what it's like. So there's the listing for the jeans. Now we're gonna move on to the shorts. It's almost exactly the same as the jeans. Let's just go straight through it. I hope this video helps if you had any issues taking photos of pants or shorts. Now I do still get returns because I mean you're selling used clothes and that's just part of the game. If you want to find out how I take photos of tops, you can watch this video right here. I've got a lot more jeans to take photos of so I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.